In this video, we are going to look at what are vector databases and how we can leverage them for creating AI architectures and how we can leverage it for pushing vector indexes and creating a search for the large language models. Let's get started. We are going to look at what are vector databases, when to use them. We will look at the different databases which can be leveraged for vector use cases. We will also see the role of the vector databases in the AI architecture. And finally, we will summarize and close the video. So why vector databases? In a traditional database, we store text and we represent text in the form of tables and columns, right? These tabular data get stored in the databases and we can query them using different indexes and search text. These have been helpful because we store these texts in its natural form and we have not done any transformation as such. And when we query them, we get the results in the same format and the way in which we store them. In terms of vector databases, in addition to text, we will have images, documents and videos as well. We convert these resources into something called as vector embeddings and store it within the database. In order to store these different types of files and data, we need to convert these into a format which is universal. And that's where vector indexes come into picture. So we convert images or maybe text or maybe audio files into a specific format. So these are called as vectors. So for example, this particular image is getting converted into a textual format or basically numbers which can be represented in a meaningful information by linking them together. I'll show that in a bit, but understand that images, text, audio, video, anything gets converted into vector format so that you can search them, link them and have relationships built between different images, different text, etc. using these vector indexes. If you look at ChatGPT as an example, ChatGPT exposes something called tokenizer, right? For example, this is the link for the tokenizer. You would have seen it in my uh, ChatGPT video, but if you see here, I am just mentioning welcome to tech primers in the tokenization or the tokenizer and I can see that these are getting split into different tokens. So every text gets split into different tokens and I can also represent this as token IDs. So these are nothing but vectors. So welcome to tech primers is represented as some series of integers or series of numbers. So let me copy this and keep it. Now if I type hello tech primers right if you see there is a change in the uh, text but tech primers has remained and if you notice the vectors which got created you can see that the tech primers which got split into three parts right tech prime and then errors these three are created with the same format only hello got changed and if you see here only the first number got changed uh, because earlier we had welcome to and then now this text is exactly the same so this is how relationships are built within the vector ecosystem and this is represented in terms of vector indexes using different algorithms for example there is an algorithm called approximate nearest neighbor algorithm this is useful for creating efficient searches because when I search for tech primers, I can have welcome to tech primers and I can also have hello tech primers resulted, right? And how this is achieved? This is achieved by creating nearest neighbors by generating these vectors which can be linked with each other. Since there is very near proximity, we can link these together. Same way, there could be different distinctions between um, sentences, words, understanding the context difference between king and a queen, man and a woman, having verbs, sentences, etc. All these can be created as relationships in different forms and they can be plotted within the database using these vector indexes. Now, when should I use vector databases? The first obvious example, like I showed, recommendation engine, right? If I want to create a recommendation engine where I want to correlate my text whatever I'm searching or whatever input I'm giving to the system and I want to create a recommendation based on that, I can use vector databases there. We can store different text data into the vector database and use the recommendation engine to stitch that back and then give it back to the user. The next one is obviously large language model or these small language models where we want to have dynamic data to be injected into the LLM using a vector index because again, LLMs function on the vector data right it creates linkages it creates data 
from the vector index and this is where vector databases are very helpful the next one is semantic search if i want to create search based on a unique text and i don't know the exact corresponding product or something relevant to that particular text i can use semantic search for it a classic example is google you can search a lot of things in google google leverages semantic search there so vector databases can be used for semantic search to build different text and then linking these texts and then relationships within these texts between these texts and finally on the similar lines if you want to do similarity search for images and audio i can do that similar to how we did for the text we can also do that for images and audio where i can post an image like the google search using the google lens i can go and now search similar images using the vector indexes which were built on top of images these are the different use cases where we can leverage vector databases now what are the different databases which are available in the industry for us to leverage for building a vector index within the database the first one obviously is open search there are tons of others like snowflake postgres in postgres you can use pg vector to convert the postgres sql database into a vector database there is neo4j neo4j you would have seen me making videos on graph database neo4j is a graph database and we can leverage graph database for the um, vector search mongodb atlas is one azure cosmos db supports vector database storage in fact in azure you also have azure open search which is again an open source search a version within azure where you can store vector data oracle database can be leveraged cassandra can be leveraged mariadb aerospike elastic search these are traditional databases which we can leverage for storing vector data or vector indexes there are new age databases like chroma pinecone quadrant vv8 milvus and llama index these are some of the new age vector databases which you can leverage for storing vector indexes if you're already using one do let me know which one are you using if you have not used one let me know which one should i go and try and start using it i thought of starting off with azure open search if you think i should try some other database do let me know in the comment section below now overlaying this with the ai architecture or the rag architecture if you remember i made a video on rag architecture and i put this diagram where it explains how we can source the data from a different knowledge base something like a rest endpoint or documents or something like that and we can convert those data into raw data sources extract the data from those sources chunk them and then create embeddings so these embeddings are nothing but the vector indexes so basically we split the data into chunks convert them into vectors like we just saw like welcome to tech privacy we converted into vector indexes right it's the same way every document we split them into smaller chunks convert them into like vectors we create different source linkages and then we create links based on the vector data and store them as vector indexes in a database these are called as either vectors or embeddings we can also inject prompt embeddings so that we can have these vectors meaningfully used and meaningfully searched and linked those are leveraged by the llms to create context around the whole vector so that it's meaningful and it is stitched back and sent to the user as an output this is how vector databases can be leveraged in the ai architecture so this is nothing but the rag architecture where you do retrieval augmented generation so all llms leverage vector databases in some form or shape where it stores data in the form of vectors just to summarize what we just discussed we saw why vector databases are useful vector databases are useful to store text images videos documents etc using these data we convert them into vectors and create relationships between these different vector indexes and store them in a database there are different databases which we use where we can store these data we can use the vector databases for creating recommendation engines semantic search or similarity search with audio and video or we can leverage them in the large language model or the small language models finally we closed off with looking at the rag architecture where we can leverage the vector databases for storing different data real time so that the llms can read these data from the vector databases be it an in-memory database or a database which is hosted on the cloud or on-prem i hope you have an idea about what are vector databases now as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video Thank you very much.